guys if you belong to these professions baking plumbing cooking carpentry and so many others and you're interested in moving to canada permanently this video is for you today we're going to be talking about ways you can move to canada with these skills without even needing any degree and you will even get your pr which is which means your permanent residency before even arriving in canada my name is stella and in this channel we talk about relocation and everything about moving abroad. Now, let's get started. Welcome back guys. So these days we've been doing loads of research into Canada immigration and Canada relocation. And to tell you the truth, I'm beginning to fall in love with Canada. One of the major reasons why I'm actually falling in love with this country is because of the several routes they made available to people without degree and even with degree. And also the ability that they can even get their permanent residency before even getting into the country. Today we're going to speak about the pathway we've observed people use. We're going to talk about the eligibility and we're going to take you through the step-by-step -step process on how you're going to go about this application. So if you are interested, try to watch till the end. So this part we're going to talk about today is the express entry. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I know a lot of people will be like, hmm, express entry, I know express entry. Well, here is the twist. I'm going to show you how you can use this express entry in connection with what the provision nominee program so our major focus is going to be on the provision nominee program now what's the advantage of applying through the provision nominee program rather than just going directly to apply for express entry well like in so many countries there are states in a country just like in canada they have different provinces and in a province the head of each province or the committee of each province know the skill that is lacking in that particular province and so they are going to enlist it on their page so you are opportunes to see more job opportunities that you can feel so you can go there and check okay is my skill needed in this province and then you apply secondly is that it tends to make your express entry route a bit faster thirdly is you know, when you are applying to Canada Express Entry, you have to put in age and all that. And at times, your age could also affect you having a point because Canada Express Entry is a point based system. But going through this round, they don't really focus so much on your age. And so it tends to give you some points and additional higher points too. Coupled with the fact that it also makes your process a bit faster. Now, what are the eligibilities of going through the provision nominee program? You must pass the language test. That's the number one. This is also like a general rule of express entry. So you must meet their minimum standard of the number language. Number two is that you must have two years experience in your field if you're working full time. And if you're working part time, the number of hours you spend doing that particular skill must be up to the number of hours a full-time person you also spend when they are also performing these skills too when talking about showing your experience how do you show your experience to these people when there are different ways you can show your experience number one you must show that this work you did is a paid job so several receipts in which people have actually paid you for carrying out this tax for them so you are going to show it as a proof Number two is that let's say you're a tailor and you've sold clothes for people or you're a capital, you've made different chairs and all that for people. You will need like some picturistic proof that, okay, this is what you've done. Also some comments from your customers that appreciate or acknowledge the fact that you have actually done this work for them. You are going to need that. These are ways you can build your proof of experience. Number three, you are going to need an educational proof. Let's say you, um, you went into high school. You don't really need a degree. So your high school certificate is okay for this one. But if you went to university or any degree show, you can also attach this and it also tends to help to boost your points in the entry pool. Number four is that you are going to need a qualification so certificate. Did you, train? did you train in a vocational school? Did you train in a college? Wherever you train that you got your qualification from, let's say the skills that you are actually practicing, the plumbing, the cooking, wherever you train, you need to provide that certificate to them so that they can look at it. Number five is that you are going to need your trainer's recommendation letter so the person that trained it needs to provide a recommendation letter that yes they trained you in this field and you are good in this particular skill so all these documents we are talking about you need to get them 
notarized or authenticated they have some bodies that are specializing authenticating your documents i'm going to be dropping the link in this description so you just need to apply to them one popular one which people use is west so you can go there and authenticate your documents so that people can see it and they can say it's real and they're going to give you a certificate after reviewing your documents you will need your police certificates but that will be probably towards the ending part you're going to need medical examinations you're going to show proof of phone to be sure that you can cater for yourself and you know that if you are bringing your family member you also need to show that you can cater for them as well in some cases you need a job offer but this one i'm going to focus on you don't need a job offer you can just come through to the express entry routes so now i'm going to go through the step-by-step -step process so let's say now I want to apply for this process i'm clueless i don't know what to do how do i start remember i said every link is going to be dropped in the description so you can just go there one step at a time and start from there so i'm going to be turning my camera now before i turn my camera if you haven't subscribed to our channel it's time to do so can you hit that like button hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that when we upload videos like this you'll be the first ones to be notified so guys i've logged into the website i did loads of research to get to this website so i've made it easy for you guys you can just go directly to the link we drop in the description and start your process so you can see here immigrate as a provisional nominee through the express entry okay so they've already explained it very simple here for you and this is why i like canada once you have logged into this website you scroll down you see they stated there that there are two ways to apply first you contact the province and territory apply to be nominated under the express entry stream once the province agrees to nominate you you create an express entry profile account or if you've already created one you just update it or you first create an express entry account then you put in the province you're interested in and if this province likes what they see in your profile they will then contact you to apply to them these are the two major ways you can apply through the provision nominee program we're going to be creating an application now so first we're going to be submitting an express entry profile i've been through this website and i observed that most province prefers that you create an express entry account first so we're going to be creating an express entry account so like they said number one submit an express entry profile you click on that link that says create an account once you click on that link you'll be taken to this page so you're going to scroll down and you see they gave you some instructions in which you can carry out this application and they said you should find out if you're eligible once you find out if you're eligible you're going to create an express entry account they also said that once you've created the account you have 60 days to complete and submit your express entry profile otherwise you have to start again and also the moment you're doing your application you ensure that you have to save you need to save every stage you are in if not it's not going to save automatically we're going to scroll up now and check our eligibility click on that find out if you're eligible so once you've clicked on it you'll be taken to this page now you are taken to this page you're going to scroll down so while you've scrolled down you're checking your eligibility now click on that check your eligibility and you'll be taken to this page you'll be asked a series of questions so the first question is what territory do you would you like to stay in the popular one is this saskatchewan that's the most popular one many people choose so once you've clicked on it you click on next the next question will be asking you about your english language test so what language do you have is it english or is it french you pick so i will pick ielts so and then once you click ielts you click on next then they are going to be asking you when did you write this ielts what year remember your ielts is only valid for two years so i'm clicking 2022 they will ask you the month you wrote it and they are also going to ask you the year you wrote this ielts the moment you've put in all those details they are going to click on next so after them they're going to ask you the score you got in each section so in speaking in reading in writing in listening so as you can see here that i'm putting different scores there 6.57 so depending on your score they are going to tell you if you meet the criteria to apply for express entry to be fair the score for most of it is not a very high one so it's something that one can easily get so they're going to ask you again now if you have any other language test that you have done let's say if you've written french the exam you took for it you put it there if you didn't write anyone you just click on 
none then they will ask you another question is do you have any canadian work experience if you have you put i'm going to click on none because i'm focusing on those that are immigrants who are still in their home country so once you've clicked on none then they are going to ask you if you do not have any other experience during this period you click on none of the above you click on none of the above then you are going to be clicking next the next question is in the last 10 years how many years of skilled worker experience do you have so you will put how many years of work experience you have there then they are going to ask in the last five years do you have at least two years experience in the following occupation so they approve many occupations except for the one that starts with seven to six and seven nine three two so you click on that find your noc page number so the moment you've clicked on it you are going to be taken to where you can put your skill let's say if you're a cook if you are a plumber baker whatever profession or whatever vocation you do you're going to be putting it all there so you see that place that they wrote filter item that particular place so you're going to go there and type whatever you are doing so i've just typed in the cook so as i've typed in there you can see the number it's in category three and the nsc code is 63200 so it's not in the exception um code so that means if you're a cook you can go through this route because your code is accepted and you are in tier three i've typed in plumber there in plumber is in the tier category of two and its nlc code is seven two three zero zero so this one is also acceptable so you need to read what was written before and check if your vocation code is among those that they said they don't they, they don't want then you 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 are not approved for this particular express entry but if it's among those that they want then you are approved for this express entry route so we are going back now to answer the question they are asking you if your job experience is among the approved list and you click on yes then they are going to ask to check if you are eligible they are going to ask you do you have any certification of qualification from a canadian province or a territory in your own skilled trade so you will click yes if you have a certificate you should have a certificate though then they will ask you how much do you have for your family that's just like a proof of fund so you put the exact amount you have they're also going to ask you how many family members are you going to be bringing with you to canada remember the higher the number of family members the higher the amount of money you are expected to come to canada with don't forget that okay so once you've clicked on that then they will tell you if you're eligible or not so based on the answers i gave to them they said i am eligible for this process so now they have said it so my next step now is i'm supposed to print out this page you will need this information to apply you can screenshot it anyway because technology has made things easy for us these days so then you can now go ahead and then continue to create your account so this is how you create your express entry account so you go ahead and apply to create an account with the express entry so you scroll up and then you see that register with a gc key account because you don't have any canadian online service before you are going to be registered through the gck link okay so you just create your account and then you carry on from there after creating your account we are going to the next stage now number two is get an express entry stream nomination so if you haven't gotten your nomination before it's time to get your nomination like we said you're going to contact a province so what we are going to be clicking on now is that contact the province directly that's what we're going to be clicking so you're going on to now. click on that contact the province directly and then you scroll down they have the eligibility here which you can go through i'm going to be going to the most popular one people used to go to and it's the saskatchewan one one that many people used to go to so you're going to click on it don't be bothered about this thing you see here just click on this saskatchewan home page so the moment you've clicked on it you're going to scroll down how to apply for simp what's simp SIP is this saskatchewan nominee program so you're going to click on it and then you will see are you an international skilled worker are you an entrepreneur are you a worker with saskatchewan work experience and all that so you click on that browse simp program then next you click on international skilled worker then you're going to scroll down again so once you scroll down you click on when they say 
international skilled worker saskatchewan express entry once you're in this page there are a couple of things i would like you to note first is for you to look at the required documentations so you need to look at what document do you need to prepare ahead of time so you click on that required document and scroll down to check the document they need and prepare them the language credential the proof of employment how they want it to be so you're not going to be making any mistake because if you make any mistake it might be difficult for them to approve your request so you need to ensure that your documents are correct and up to date next is that required forms you need to click that form so you see that number one general application form for canada you need to fill that form up if you have any other family additional family information you fill that up too because you will need to submit it during your course of registration and application after noting all that you come to this overview so in this overview you look at what they stated there they said the eligibility is that you must have been accepted into the ircc express entry so we have already initially created an account and we were eligible and we've opened an account and created one with the express entry so we are good to go so the moment you've noted that you are good to go you can when you have time but for the sake of this video so we don't want this video to be too long you can go through all those things that they stated there all right so then next we're going to be clicking on how to apply so on that how to apply you see that they said after getting an invitation to apply through the express entry you must follow the guidelines and all that if you still want further clarification you can click on that apply online to express entry video and watch it so now we're going to click on that express of interest system that's what we're going to be clicking on because we want to create an expression of interest so we're going to click on create an expression of interest profile because it will lead you into this page so once we've clicked on create an expression of interest profile then you'll be taken to this page where you're going to create an account because you don't have an account once you've clicked on that create an account they'll be asking you to select a registration type so we're clicking on the one that says expression of interest candidates so the moment we click on, we click on continue from continue we're taking to this page whereby you are supposed to create a username a password you put your first name and all those normal registration process so after doing that an email will be sent to you with a password so you put that password there and you will create a new password the one that you can remember so you put in a new password then you confirm a new password then you change the password then you're going to be logging in now so once you've logged in you will see this page you're going to agree to the terms and condition if you have time you can decide to read through so I've agreed to the terms and conditions that you're going to be linked to this page whereby you see the pencil there that's where you're going to be creating an expression of interest why the one with the tick sign is for you to view your personal information and the other one is to change your password uh, you'll be taken to this page where you're going to fill in all your details your name your gender your marital status your prefix you put all your details in there you put your passport number remember you must have a passport like we always say if you want to move out of your country to a new country you need a passport you put your correct email address and then you are going to put if you're a skilled worker or whatever you are so you'll be putting a skilled worker there anyway so guys once you've done with this phase and you've submitted if you are successful they are going to give you an invitation to apply to the province so at this stage you're going to submit all your documents every document that we check during the required documents required form you're going to scan them and submit it to them so the moment you've scanned and submitted it to they'll them they'll review your document and if successful they will grant you a nomination letter so by the time they've gone to do this nomination letter yeah. you go back to your express entry profile and update it or you send the message to the province that nominated you with your express entry details and they will automatically update your profile which you have to approve or confirm that yes this is the province that you are working with and then automatically your express entry profile receives 600 points and that's very good because it's going to help you to boost any extra point the express entry profile gives to you so then you're going to wait for a period of about six months to get an invitation to apply for a permanent residence if you are successful they will also give you additional points after reviewing your document based on your express entry profile so these points given to you plus the one given to you by your 
province is going to add up and it's going to help to boost your application so next is number four which is that you'll be applying for what filling your application for once you have gotten an invite to apply so once you've gotten an invitation to apply by express entry you're going to be filling the application form after filling the application form you have 60 days to complete your application then you submit the application fee then you just wait after waiting once they've granted you your permanent residence you are good to go apply for your visa and you get yourself in canada so guys have watch this video the ball is now in your courts because you can now go through the links and then apply we've brought every information to your doorstep so it's not about saying oh i want to get an agent oh i don't know how to get an agent the most important thing is to get your documents and after getting your documents you can then apply and having patience so remember we said if you, if you haven't watched our previous video we did uk versus canada and one major thing that we talked about was that canada process takes a bit longer than the uk process but at least you can get your pr you can get your citizenship you can also watch that video to ask yourself do you want to go to canada do you want to go to uk and make an informed decision my name is still remains stella and see you in our next video bye for now